Hi, in a previous video, I reviewed this MSO 5104 HD 1GHz bandwidth mixed signal oscilloscope. And as promised, I'm going to open it up today and take a look inside. Now, I have done teardowns with the 2000 x series and 3000 x series before, so I'm really curious to see if there are any major differences. Of course, the ADCs will be 12 bits, but I wanted to see if there are any other major hardware changes. I will leave some links in the video description below, so when you get a chance, you can check out my teardowns of the MSO 2304X and the MSO 3054X. Given that the 5 gig samples per second is only when a single channel or a pair of channels like channel 1 and channel 3 or channel 2 and channel 4 are enabled, and the sampling rate drops to 2.5 gig samples per second when channel 1 and channel 2 are enabled at the same time, I'm pretty sure the general ADC architectures are the same, just like in the other Unity oscilloscopes. Unity is essentially using the interweaving or interleaving technique for achieving the maximum bandwidth. But let me open it up and verify. And from my experience from taking apart the other Unity scopes, I think we may have to essentially fully disassemble the unit. So let me do that off the camera, and I'll be right back. All right, I just opened up. From a glance, the inside looks quite different compared to the 3 X series I did teardown with before. The construction is absolutely top-notch. You can see from the picture I took here before I opened up the case, the inner case is made of aluminum, and you can also see the two fans mounted on an angle. And because these fans are mounted on an angle, during operation, they suck in air and blow onto the heat sinks. These fans are super quiet during operation. On the other side here, there are a couple of cutouts so that you can access the programming headers and test points easily. Here, by the look of it, we have a serial port, a recovery jumper, and a JTAG programming header. Next to the Ethernet jack, we also have a serial wire debugging port. Before we take a look at the main board, let's actually remove the shielding here and take a look at the power supply. It looks like the power supply used here is very similar to the power supplies used in the 3000X series. Let me zoom in so we can see it closer. By the way, I'll put a picture of the power supply in the 3000X series here if you wanted to compare. And the power supply is actually very simple. You can see we don't have a lot of components on the top. I'm sure there's some ICs at the bottom of the PCB. I'm not going to remove it. You can see that it's essentially a very standard layout power supply. The power supply also has a single output. You can see it's 13 volts. By using the same power supply module across multiple products, Unity can save on parts because of the scale, and also it simplifies the design as well, because all the designs now just have to worry about one single output voltage, instead of having to have separate designs based on different input voltages. Perhaps another reason the 5000HD series is so quiet is that it did away with the internal fan on the FPGA. In my teardown of the 2304X and the 3054X, I mentioned that the main reason those units were a little bit noisy is because they have a small diameter fan mounted on the FPGA, and because of the higher speed, the fan is actually quite noisy and is responsible for most of the noise generated. In the 5104HD, instead of using a smaller heatsink on top of the FPGA directly, Unity designed this massive heatsink that covers the ADCs and FPGA. You can probably just able to see the four ADCs mounted under the heatsink here. Let me try to see if you can see it better from another angle. This means that this portion of the heatsink is actually responsible for these ADCs. Now I assume the FPGA or FPGA chips are probably somewhere in this neighborhood. And here is a picture before I remove the shielding fan on the front end input channels. You can see there are no additional fans beside the two mounted on the case I just showed you. Now interestingly though, you can see we do have a couple of fan connectors on the board they are not used. This one for example is marked as FPGA fan. Now I'm wondering, perhaps the 3000 HD series uses a different heatsink design and needed a dedicated fan for the FPGA. That's my speculation because these boards are actually very expensive to design and build. It is not unusual for board designers to design some of the features and later decided not to use them. It's always good to have options. And because we have this massive piece in here, I guess based on this design, the designer chose not to include the fan after all. Well, unfortunately, I'm not able to remove the main heatsink here. I had removed all the screws, as you can see here. I actually tried different methods over the past couple of weeks because I really wanted to take it off so you can see what are the ADCs and FPGAs they're using. I tried to pry, applying heat to the heatsink, hoping that the seal pads underneath would loosen up, but the heatsink remains stuck. I'm sure if I apply enough force, 
the heatsink will eventually come off. But there's a chance something will get damaged if I do that. Also, you can probably see that we don't have enough space underneath the heatsink to insert anything to pry on the heatsink itself. The space here you can see we also have components underneath. So the chances of my hand slipping and accidentally damage something is pretty high. Since I intend to use this oscilloscope as my daily scope, I didn't want to risk damaging it for the teardown. So I decided not to remove the heatsink. I know you guys are probably a little bit disappointed, and so am I to be very honest. This is really a pity unfortunately, but you can see just like the 3000X series, we actually have four of these ADCs underneath as I showed you before. So the general architecture should be exactly the same as the 3000X series. If you recall, in the 3000X series, Unity used four ADC0AD 108-bit ADCs. They are actually dual channel ADCs. Because the 3000X series can support two channels operating simultaneously without sacrificing bandwidth, for example using channel 1 and channel 3, or channel 2 and channel 4 at the same time. This means these four ADCs are divided into two groups. Each group, which contains two ADC chips, are responsible for the 5 gig samples per second sampling rate. Because these are dual channel ADC chips, this means four of these ADC channels are actually interweaved or interleaved to achieve that 5 gig samples per second sampling rate. So the implementation here is definitely quite complicated. The amount of engineering that goes into the design is actually quite remarkable. Anyway, I assume that the 5000 HD series work pretty much the same way, except that these ADCs now are 12 bits instead of 8 bits. Of course, the ADC chips are going to be very expensive if I have to guess based on what we saw in the 3000X series. If anybody has any information on ADC chips used in this oscilloscope, please leave a note in the comment section below. Because we do have access to the front end, let's actually spend a little bit of time here. Instead of using individual shielding cans on top of these input channels, Unity actually designed a single piece of cast aluminum to shield the entire board. And this shielding can is actually much thicker than your typical shielding cans. You can see here, it even matches the heatsink design of the main heatsink up here, making the overall look and feel aesthetically pleasing, even though most people don't get the chance to see that. All right, I just zoomed in on the front channel here. I'm showing you three of the four channels. They are all pretty much identical, so it doesn't really matter. Anyway, the first thing you will probably notice are these Omron relays. The part number is G6K-2F-RF. These are high-frequency relays rated for 1 GHz. Now, they're not cheap, retailing for over $16 a piece, if you buy a whole reel. And here we have eight of these. If I have to guess, one of these relays probably is responsible for the 50 ohm input switching. You can see here we have a resistor on each channel and that's marked as 49R9 and that's a 49.9 ohm resistor. If you compare the front end circuitry to what is in an MSO 3054X, which I'll overlay here, you'll notice that besides these two extra RF relays, the front end design looks quite similar. Of course, there are some differences I'll point out shortly, but these RF relays are not present in the 3000X series. On this side of these RF relays, we have a solid state relay, and I assume that's responsible for switching between AC and DC coupling by shorting out the input capacitor. And here we have a chip that is marked as BUF802. That's a high-speed JFET buffer, and it has a bandwidth of 3.1 GHz with a slew rate of 7,000 volts per microsecond. Actually, the same buffer is also used in the 3000X series, which I have shown in a teardown video of the MSO 3054X. In the middle of the front end, you can see we have a couple of these trim caps by the look of it, and these are used for fine-tuning the frequency response of the front end. Then back here, you can see we have another BOF802 buffer. Here we have two QFN chips. The bottom one here is an LMH5401, 8 GHz gain bandwidth product low noise amplifier. It has a slew rate of 17,500 volts per microsecond. Here we have an LMH6401, 4.5 GHz bandwidth differential variable gain amplifier. So although the layout of the front end is actually very similar to what we have in the 3000X series, obviously the amplifier chips are different because of the higher bandwidth of the 5104HD. And finally up here we have a Texas Instruments DA8168C 14-bit 8-channel DAC which I assume works with the LMH6401 for setting the gain of the amplifier. Of course, we have to have a 595 shift register here. Between the RF relays and the gigahertz bandwidth amplifiers and the DAC, 
the bill of material for each channel will easily add up to be more than $100. And let me move it to the right a little bit. I didn't notice this before, but you can see we have two of these connectors here. These are actually not used. I'm not entirely sure what these are for because there's no silk screen around these connectors. And here are our two function generator output channels. You can see the 49.9 ohm resistors here again, and these are for the 50 ohm output impedance. The function generator output portion of the circuitry looks pretty much identical to what's in the MSO 3000X series, which is not surprising as the specs are quite similar. Now the sampling rate of the function generators in the 5000 HD series is a little bit higher than those in the 3000X series, 312.5 mega samples per second versus 250 mega samples per second. So perhaps Unity used a different chip for the function generators. If you recall, in the MSO 3000X series, Unity used a Spartan 6 FPGA dedicated to the function generators. Here besides the deck, I actually don't see any FPGAs, at least not in this vicinity here. Perhaps the FPGA for the signal generator is also under the heatsink up here, but I'm not sure. Now this heatsink here, I don't think is for the FPGA because if you remember from our teardown of the 3000X series, the chip here is actually a rock chip RK3568 SOC. Although there's some change, of course, we can't find the output FPGA here. That's presumably under the heatsink, but we do have the same deck here. The output deck is an AD9122 which is the same as what is used in MSO 3000X series. It's a dual-channel 16-bit digital-to-analog converter chip, and that's the deck we're talking about here. Between the function generator and the output of the oscilloscope input channels, we have a row of these ADCMP 562s, and these are PECL high-speed dual competitors for the logic analyzer. Of course, we have the DC-to-DC -DC converters here to generate the required negative rails for the PECL competitors. And let's see what else. Towards the DC input jack, you can see we have a chip here, and that looks a little bit interesting because we have all these inductors around it. And this chip, as it turns out, is a rock chip RK809-5. Inside the chip, we have five step-down DC converters built in. And back here, we have a Wi-Fi module. And this chip here is actually a flash memory chip. And behind the heatsink, let's actually take a look here, we have a couple of these SDRAMs. I'm not going to remove the board from the case. I would have considered taking it out had I been able to remove the heatsink, but there's not going to be anything else interesting. And if you have watched my MSO 2304X teardown video or the MSO 3054X teardown video, you'll get an idea of what's underneath. And that pretty much concludes this video. As you have seen, the build quality is absolutely top-notch. But for a $6,000 plus price tag oscilloscope, this is something you would expect. I'm glad to see all these high-end components used to make this 1 gigahertz bandwidth oscilloscope. How everything is put together is actually very well engineered. Like they say, no expense is spared. I hope you enjoyed this teardown. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.